In 2024, Ukrainian gunners quietly began combat testing something that looks wrong at first glance. Not a massive tracked howitzer, not a 40-ton truck with a huge recoil spade, a Humvee. On the back of that Humvee sat a full-size 105mm howitzer, AM General and Mandis Group's Hawkeye mobile howitzer system. In training footage and battlefield reports, crews drive in, drop stabilizers, fire, and roll out again, often in roughly three minutes from arrival to departure. The Humvee doesn't flip, the chassis doesn't shear in half, and despite firing standard 105mm rounds out to nearly 20 kilometers with rocket-assisted projectiles, the crew stays in the vehicle. What Ukraine is helping prove on a real battlefield is one of the first combat deployments of a modern soft recoil howitzer, a technology that's starting to rewrite artillery survivability. Here's the underlying problem it's trying to fix. On a modern battlefield, towed artillery is becoming a liability. Modern counter-battery radars like the USANTPQ-53, plus drones and networked fires, can detect a firing position and generate return fire in well under a few minutes. Traditional towed howitzers need a full gun crew, a prime mover, and multiple minutes to emplace and then to pack up and move, under calm training conditions. Under fire, that's a death sentence. Russia, China, and now even middle-tier armies are learning the same lesson. If your gun can't shoot and scoot inside that survivability window, it gets killed. So the question became, what if you could mount real artillery on something as light and common as a tactical truck and fire it safely? That's what Hawkeye and its big brother Brutus set out to do. And the physics hack that makes it possible has been maturing in the background for over a decade. Let's set the baseline everybody thought was unbreakable. When a conventional 105mm or 155mm howitzer fires, the propellant spike in the chamber reaches tens of thousands of pounds per square inch in milliseconds. That impulse translates into tens of tons of backward force into the carriage and whatever it's mounted on. If you don't tame that recoil, you don't just rock the truck, you destroy it. Traditional solutions are brute force, massive recoil mechanisms that slow the barrel's rearward travel, heavy split trails and spades that dig into the ground, a carriage and chassis built to absorb violent instantaneous shocks. The lightweight 155mm M777 howitzer still weighs around 4,200 kilograms, about 9,300 pounds. And that's after replacing a lot of steel with titanium and aluminum. It was a huge improvement over its predecessor, the M198, which weighed over 15,000 pounds. Even then, you don't just tow an M777 behind a pickup. In US service, it's typically pulled by a 6x6 FMTV truck with about a five-person crew and several minutes required for full emplacement or displacement under doctrinal conditions. Self-propelled guns solve some of that. The M109 Paladin packages a 155mm howitzer, ammunition, and crew protection into a tracked vehicle weighing over 80,000 pounds, about 40 tons. That bulk is doing work. It soaks up recoil and keeps the crew alive, but it comes at a cost. Heavier logistics load, bridge and road limits in much of the world. Unit prices well into eight figures per howitzer once you include support vehicles and spares. For decades, engineers tried to go lighter, put guns on trucks, or use simpler carriages. A lot of countries succeeded at medium weight truck howitzers, systems like France's Caesar or China's PCL-181, but they still need six by six or eight by eight trucks weighing 20 to 30 tons. They are not Humvees. The real impossible leap was this. Could you put a full caliber artillery piece on a light tactical truck like a Humvee or five ton FMTV and keep the recoil low enough that the chassis survives, the crew can stay on board, and the vehicle can still drive away immediately after firing? That's where Mandis Group comes in. In the mid-2000s, they pitched a radical idea. Instead of just absorbing recoil, change the timing of the forces themselves. To artillery traditionalists, it sounded like heresy. Newton's third law is not a suggestion. Fire a shell forward, get kicked backward. That's how guns work. But Mandis engineers found a way to make that backward kick arrive slower and smaller by making the barrel move forward first. To understand why shaving seconds off your firing cycle matters, you have to look at how counter-battery warfare evolved. For most of the 20th century, artillery doctrine was mass fires from fixed positions. You'd line guns up hub to hub, fire for minutes or hours, then displace when the mission was over. Counter-battery was manual. Spotters, sound ranging, aerial observation. You could get away with sitting in one place. By the late Cold War, the US had fielded firefinder radars. ANTPQ-36 and Q-37 that could track incoming shells, 
derive their point of origin, and feed coordinates back to firing units in roughly a minute or so. Today, radars like the ANTPQ-53 and similar foreign systems take that further. They can search 90 degrees or 360 degrees, automatically classify mortar, rocket, and artillery trajectories, and deliver firing data fast enough to support almost real-time counter-battery fire. Layer on top, cheap persistent drones watching for muzzle flashes and dust plumes, network digital fires chains, longer range guns and rockets, and your survivability window as a gun crew shrinks to a few minutes at best, often less, between your first shot and incoming enemy rounds. Now look at classic towed systems in that context. The M777 can be emplaced or displaced in roughly two to three minutes each way under test conditions, but that assumes perfect crews, no terrain issues, and no chaos. Realistically, especially for less trained forces, it can take longer. The lighter 105mm M119, the standard US 105mm howitzer used by airborne and light infantry units, is better but still constrained. It's airdroppable, can be slung under a Chinook, and can be towed by a Humvee or light truck, but doctrinal emplacement and displacement times are still measured in multiple minutes, with a crew of five to seven soldiers. Meanwhile, enemies are not standing still. China has replaced older towed pieces with modern truck howitzers like the PCL-181, explicitly to gain fastness in response, marching, and aiming. PLA sources emphasize that systems like PCL-181 can go from movement to firing multiple rounds and back on the road again in just a few minutes, far faster than legacy towed guns. U.S. Army Futures Command Boss General James Rainey summed it up in 2024. We have witnessed the end of the effectiveness of towed artillery. The future is not bright for towed artillery. For units like the 82nd Airborne, 101st Air Assault, and Striker Brigade combat teams, that creates a brutal trade-off. Bring towed guns and accept that radars and drones will find and kill them. Or, go without artillery and rely on air or rockets that may not always be available. Soft recoil tech and systems like Hawkeye and Brutus offer a third option. Here's how Mandis Group's soft recoil system bends the rules without breaking physics. The forward recoil trick. In a conventional howitzer, the barrel and breech are locked in place at the instant of firing. The propellant ignites, pressure spikes, the shell accelerates forward, and the whole system gets slammed backward at the same time. Soft recoil changes the timing. Just before the propellant fully ignites, hydraulic actuators drive the barrel assembly forward a short distance. When the charge goes off, the shell is already moving forward, and the gun mass is already moving forward as well. So instead of, shell goes forward, gun violently kicks backward, you get, barrel moves forward, shell accelerates further forward. The backward recoil impulse meets a gun that's already going the other way. You're not violating Newton. You're spreading the impulse over a longer time and partially canceling the peak forces. Mandis and its partners advertise up to about 60% reduction in recoil loads compared to conventional systems. Lower peak loads mean a much lighter carriage and mount, smaller stabilizers, the ability to bolt a real artillery piece to vehicles that were never designed for that job. Hawkeye, shoot and scoot on a Humvee. Hawkeye is the poster child for this. It mounts a standard USM-20 105mm cannon on a Humvee-based platform using Mandis's soft recoil system and a digital fire control suite. Key performance points from AM General and Mandis. Weight. The complete Hawkeye self-propelled gun on its Humvee chassis weighs about 4.4 tons, approximately 9,700 pounds, lighter than many armored SUVs. Crew typically a three to four person crew with the ability to operate in extreme circumstances with two. Range, about 11 to 12 kilometers with standard high explosive rounds and up to approximately 19.5 kilometers with rocket assisted projectiles like the M913. Rate of fire, up to eight rounds per minute for three minutes with a sustained rate of about three rounds per minute. Shoot and scoot, company data and recent reporting say Hawkeye can roll into position, drop its stabilizers, fire its first round in about 1.5 minutes, then finish the mission and be moving again in roughly three minutes total. Updated AUSA 2025 materials, quote, emplaced, fired, and displaced in under 90 seconds for the latest configuration. Compare that to the M119, it conceptually supplements. The M119 still needs a prime mover, a five to seven person crew, manual laying, and more steps to emplace and displace. Hawkeye's digital fire control automatically computes elevation and azimuth. GPS provides precise location, 
there's no need for aiming stakes or surveyed firing points. In mid-2024, the U.S. transferred at least one Hawkeye system to Ukraine for combat evaluation. Open sources describe Ukrainian crews using it exactly as advertised. Race in, fire several rounds, move a few hundred meters, and fire again, staying ahead of Russian counter-battery radars and drones. Brutus, scaling the idea to 155 millimeters. Now scale that concept up. Brutus is a 155 millimeter mobile hybrid soft recoil howitzer jointly developed by AM General and Mandis Group. It mounts the same M776 barrel used on the M777 onto a 6x6 FMTV family, 5-ton truck using a hydro pneumatic soft recoil mount and stabilizing outriggers. Performance. Caliber. 155mm NATO standard. Same family of ammunition as M777. Range. Around 24 to 25 kilometers with standard shells and up to approximately 30 kilometers with rocket assisted projectiles, according to European Security and Defense and AM General. Mobility. Built on the existing FMTV 6x6 chassis. The same truck family already in wide US Army service. Crew. Conceptually a four person crew with automated laying and digital fire control. Brutus is still an experimental demonstrator system rather than a fielded U.S. program, but the logic is the same. Use soft recoil to keep peak loads low enough for a standard medium truck. Give light and striker formations true 155mm reach and lethality without the weight of a tracked paladin. Dramatically cut the time from halt to first round and back to movement into the same survivability envelope that Hawkeye targets. Both Hawkeye and Brutus piggyback on existing logistics. Standard trucks, standard guns, standard ammunition. That's a huge selling point for export customers and for armies that can't afford entirely new tracked fleets. The cost angle. Exact unit prices for Hawkeye and Brutus aren't publicly fixed. They're prototypes and concept systems, but you can anchor them against known baselines. An M777 runs roughly two to four million dollars per gun, depending on customer and contract, based on US and Indian deals. An M109, Paladin's average procurement cost is roughly $9 to $10 million per vehicle in recent selected acquisition reports. Hawkeye and Brutus reuse trucks that armies already own and guns that already exist. The value proposition is less about exotic hardware and more about adding mobility and survivability to artillery you've effectively already paid for. So what does all this add up to in actual warfighting terms? Airborne and light infantry, real artillery that can survive. Right now, units like the 82nd Airborne and 101st Air Assault depend heavily on 105mm guns like the M119, airdroppable, helicopter transportable, but towed and relatively slow to move under fire. Drop Hawkeye into that ecosystem and the picture changes. You can deploy self-propelled 105mm artillery on the same C-130s and C-17s that bring the troops in. Once on the ground, the guns can keep pace with airborne infantry, set up in tight urban or complex terrain, fire quickly, and relocate before enemy sensors and drones can bracket them. Crews are smaller, which matters when every extra soldier is another paratrooper you have to drop and sustain. None of this is in a formal U.S. acquisition program yet, but it's exactly the kind of capability Army Futures Command is asking industry for when it talks about more mobile, more autonomous artillery for light forces. Striker and medium forces, fires that can actually keep up. Striker brigade combat teams move quickly on roads. Dragging a towed 155mm howitzer behind a truck at high speed is not ideal, and it leaves guns vulnerable whenever they're unhooked and emplaced. Brutus solves that at the concept level. Artillery rides on the truck, not behind it. The same FMTV family that already supports striker formations becomes an artillery platform. That means faster time from movement to fire to movement again, matching the tempo of striker maneuver. Again, Brutus is still a demonstrator, not a program of record, but it lines up almost perfectly with the Army's stated desire for readily available mobile howitzer options to replace vulnerable towed pieces. China and Russia. Parallel evolution. The U.S. doesn't have a monopoly on this idea. China fields the PCL-181 and X5mm truck howitzers that emphasize fast response shoot and scoot tactics and deployment in high mountains and other difficult terrain. Russia is pushing wheeled systems like the 2S43 Malva, a 152mm gun on an 8x8 chassis designed to be cheaper, lighter, and more mobile than legacy track systems. Their guns don't necessarily use Mandis-style soft recoil, but the operational concept is converging. Big guns on relatively light trucks that can can fire, displace, and fire again before counter-battery and drones kill them.
The terrain is shifting from big track batteries sitting in firing positions for hours to distributed truck mounted guns constantly moving. The asymmetric problem, and there's a darker angle, proliferation, a Hawkeye style system can be disguised under a tarp on what looks like a normal tactical truck. From overhead, especially in cluttered urban or semi-urban terrain, it's a lot harder to distinguish from civilian traffic than a tracked howitzer. If systems like this proliferate beyond state actors, legally or via gray or black markets, you get non-state groups able to fire a handful of long range accurate shells, move a few blocks, Blend back into the landscape before counter battery or air power can respond. Radars still work, but they work best against predictable stationary batteries. Mobile guns compress that decision window brutally. So where does this go between now and 2035? In October 2025, AM General rolled out a next generation Hawkeye at the AUSA annual meeting. New chassis, upgraded powertrain, refined digital fire control, and an emphasis on even faster deployment. The company advertises that the latest Hawkeye can be emplaced, fired, and displaced in under 90 seconds, while still keeping recoil loads low enough for a light truck to survive. U.S. Army leadership hasn't signed a production contract yet. Recent coverage still describes Hawkeye and Brutus as awaiting a first major customer. But the context has shifted. Ukraine has combat-tested Hawkeye and proven that a soft recoil Humvee howitzer can survive under Russian drones and counter-battery fire. A new Army conventional fire study and public comments from Futures Command are openly questioning the future of towed artillery and calling for exactly the kind of mobility Hawkeye and Brutus offer. NATO and partner armies are watching that combination very carefully. Several Eastern European and Indo-Pacific militaries are already investing in wheeled self-propelled howitzers for the same reason. Survive drones and counter-battery by moving more and sitting still less. Hawkeye and Brutus slot neatly into that trend, especially for countries that already operate U.S. trucks and 105 and 155 millimeter guns. That doesn't mean the Paladin or equivalent heavy SPHs are going away. When you need sustained fires, hundreds of rounds over hours, with maximum protection and onboard ammunition, you still want an armored tracked vehicle with space, armor, and power. What Hawkeye type systems do is fill the gap for airborne, air assault, and light infantry formations, rapid reaction and expeditionary forces, smaller allies who need modern artillery but can't afford or support heavy SPH fleets. Think of it as doing for artillery what the striker did for infantry, carving out a sweet spot between too light to survive and too heavy to deploy. Soft recoil tech that looked like a lab curiosity 10 to 15 years ago is now combat tested in Ukraine, demonstrated on multiple truck platforms, and being wrapped into a next-gen Hawkeye aimed straight at the Army's stated requirements. So the core question for artillery crews becomes, would you trade some maximum range and magazine depth for the ability to fire, move, and live inside a counter-battery window measured in seconds instead of minutes? Because right now, from Donbass to the Pacific, that's the trade-off the world's gun crews are starting to confront. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that subscribe button, we break down the tech behind modern great power warfare every week and drop a comment. Should the U.S. Army push hard into light truck mounted howitzers like Hawkeye and Brutus or stay focused on heavier systems and long range rockets instead?